And y'all thought I was crazy. Y'all thought I was crazy. <laughs> I got so much heat for my episode 11 impressions because I was confused. I was confused as to what Anisfia was going on about not losing her title as a princess. And everybody, like all these dang comments, I got so many comments, so many downvotes. People saying, what's so hard to get? Obviously, Anisfia is insert reasoning. And every single one of them was different, proving my point that nobody knew what Anisfia was going on about. What was this whole thing about the princess? I agree with a lot of people. Don't get me wrong. I could have seen every single vantage point. My point was that the episode didn't state or didn't insinuate one specific issue. Was it because of Algard? Was she upset? Did she feel bad about Algard? Did she want to be a princess and be queen because she regrets what happened with Algar. She blames herself. I can see that. Is she upset because Euphelia literally has magic and saying, you can't become queen. I have magic. You'll never be accepted. I can see that. I can see every single one of people's vantage points for that. The problem was that it never specifically said it. And I get the biggest validation from that, but also the biggest validation from, yes, episode 12 specifically says what she was going on about. The reason why she didn't want to lose her princess status and she felt that Euphelia was taking it from her was because of her past memories. That was it. She specifically says it in this episode. The reason why I was so upset about that, the reason why I said that was because I have these memories. It's a secret. Keep it a secret. <laughs> I have these past memories and she's afraid because she thought she erased the last Anisphia. When she got those memories, those flooded in. And it made her afraid that she erased their daughter. She erased the princess. And that's why she was so dead set on not losing that status. She thought she took something from these people. Thought she took something from their parents. Thought she took away Anisphia's life. And she didn't want to lose that one last shred that made her Anisphia. That was why she was so upset. And that's what she was going on about. The whole thing about the princess is because she didn't want to lose the last remaining thing that made Anisphia Anisphia. She wanted this past, if the possibility that she took over this life, she didn't want to take that last thing from her. She screwed it all up. She didn't want to lose this last thing. It makes sense. Now, amongst everything else, it didn't make sense. It could be possible, but that makes sense. Now, the only regret there is that it's completely left field for a lot of us. And yes, like I said, when I was checking the comments, nobody brought that up. Because it was so left field. We didn't see... We honestly, for the most of this series, have never really gotten a perspective of what she feels about her past memories. The only thing she ever brought up was that at some point when she was very young, she was with Ilya, and bam, those memories came into her head. And it inspired her to do magicology because she wanted to fly like the birds that she's seen inside of her vision. Now, it, at that time, it really felt like it was a snapshot. Like she's seen a vision, like a, a picture now it's sort sort of insinuating that she has all these memories are past and she's those all flitted in. I like that it hasn't shaped her completely, but now that stuff is kind of flooded in, it never talked about it. From that then on, it never really talks about it. And then right here, well, the dragon brings up the fact that she's a traveler or something like that. I forget exactly what he said. And then here, bam, it brings it back up. But here, this is a thing. And again, I do like that. I don't need every isekai to be constantly thinking about, oh my gosh, this is just like when I was in my previous life, or oh my gosh, I can apply this for my previous life. She's living in the now, and I like that. I like that Anisphia is Anisphia, and it gives credit to the scene. I think the fact that they haven't been focusing so much on that fact makes this scene hit so much harder, because again, it makes sense to her character. She wants to be Anisphia, because she believes she erased her. And she doesn't want to take the last remaining, th anything else that she can re believe exists of Anisphia, she wants to hold on to it. Because she doesn't want to ruin this girl's life because she thought that she erased her. It can go so many other places, but I think that was really a point which it kind of, it put a, a nail in it. Like, this is done. Now, they could get into something else with it later on, but I think that was really solidifying through Euphelia. No, you're Anisphia move on. And so again, they could, they can dredge it back up, but 
for now, it feels it feels kind of complete at that point. And again, I like that it's not spending too much time on it. This is this world. Yes, this is the product of her coming to this world, but this is this world. But anyways, my gloating about the fact that I was right to be confused <laughs> aside, <laughs> solid episode. I, I think this was a great wrap up, a really great conclusion of the series. It feels a little fast in the later half. I'll be perfectly honest. The fight was really fast. I didn't expect too much from the fight. I think it was short and sweet, but it was a lot of build up for a very short fight and just more focused on the going forward. And I think that was necessary. Get the fight over with, and let's focus on how we're going to wrap up this series. And I think it did a really good job. It's still opening up the door for future stuff, which I do appreciate. But for now, it feels complete. It feels like a nice book into it. It feels like it's the narration's already kind of insinuating. They're going to revolutionize everything. Euphelia will be the last of these nobles becoming queens and all that kind of stuff. They're changing from the old to the new. And that's kind of your expectation. It's a magical revolution. Really surprised they actually had Euphelia make a pact like literally in the middle of fight <laughs> i was like did they just like it, it, it cuts over to lumi and lumi's like it's done and i'm like oh we're doing this like okay we're we're actually doing it, it made sense because my assumption at this point when when this whole problem came up and we knew that anisphia wasn't going to be set for being queen it just didn't really feel right again it, it goes against everything that makes anisphia anisphia becoming queen unless she becomes queen and says i'm gonna do whatever the hell i want Come at me, nobles. And then Euphelia's there like, all right, let me explain this in a way that everybody's going to accept it because I'm really good at talking. <laughs> Unless they force the nobles to accept who Anisphia is, I knew that she couldn't become queen. So it made sense that Euphelia, bringing up the contract and everything, it made sense that she would become queen. But I think it's really nice in the idea that I knew with the advent of that, there was two scenarios here. That eventually Anisphia using her magicology and using her smarts would eventually figure out a way to break Euphelia from her immortality or having the dragon's thing on her back makes her immortal. Dragons live for a long, long, long time. So it makes sense that Anisphia right now is going to live for a long time at least. Not immortal possibly, but it, 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 it makes it to where she's going to be able to live long. Lumi even, I think at some point, and I might, I might be wrong on this, I think Lumi at some point specified that it's not immortality. It's just that she's going to live for a long, long time. She ages, like she stopped aging. And I would assume that at some point they break off the contract. So I can assume that Lumi at some point would die. I'd assume that at some point Euphelia would die. They're saying in this episode that Euphelia is immortal. Don't get me wrong. I, I understand that. But they could be saying the idea that, yes, she's going to live for hundreds of years, which is pretty much immortality. So I think that it's going to work both ways. And I think that in the end, and if is saying, I will find immortality if I can't break your curse, I think she already has it. Or again, she could figure out some way. Well, well, well that's probably 50 volumes from now if they keep going with the light novel. But yeah, her, her taking the pack in the middle of the fight was kind of like, oh, we're doing this. It looked beautiful. Um, I, I thought that was another one of those moments of like, salt in the wound this idea that you're fighting against somebody that has magic and you're gonna get beat down by magic and then it kind of proves this whole idea that whatever she got from her dragon that she probably is not fully mastered yet euphelia with her spirit pact contract she was far more stronger but it sort of insinuates the idea that she just stood there and she says it afterwards that she's cruel like she brings out this she makes the pack and she makes this big old beam i'll show it to you as many times as you want I'll show you the magic you love so much. I can do that now. Pours that magic down on Anisphia. And Anisphia's like, you're so cruel. I can't do anything. It's so beautiful. And she just pretty much takes the hit. I thought it was just kind of a nice little... I, again, it was very quick and, it, and, and over with, but it makes sense to the whole story. Anisphia would be completely enamored by this beauty of magic. This great, intense, massive amount of magic that she's always wanted, just flooding in on her. So it was it was a nice it was a nice ending to it, but yeah, the mother, Anisphia blaming herself for her mother knew that her mother pretty much blamed herself for the fact that Anisphia had never had magic, and she felt like she was a failure to her. She can't become queen. Wanted to become queen specifically to remove that stain from her mother. Her mother was always she always felt that her mother was condemning herself, but no. 
obviously, <laughs> in a mother's eyes, for most mothers, not terrible mothers, no, you were always far more than I ever deserved. It was such a cute, cute little scene. But yes, that leads into the bedroom scene, which, thanks to certain somebody, I won't mention their name for spoiling that. I woke up and looked at my Discord, and suddenly there's a freaking image pops up of the kiss, and I'm like, thanks. <laughs> thanks for the spoiler. I, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past the show. It's not that big of a shock, but at the same time, it's like, okay, that's nice to know. Um, I'll enjoy watching it later. Uh, anyways, it's tough doing, it's tough being a content creator just for spoilers. I've been doing really good kind of trying to form my focus around the community that kind of forms around the Taku spirit, but there's still a lot of people just kind of come out of nowhere and go, here's a spoiler. Thanks, dude. Appreciate it. Anyways. <laughs> That aside, yes, the scene with the two of them, again, was really fantastic. I've pretty much already gone through the whole reveal that she's from this other world, reveals it to Euphelia, wants her to keep it a secret, and yes, that's pretty much the reason why she didn't want to give up her princess status, was because she felt like she erased Anisphia, which I do really love Euphelia's response to this and the idea that she's just like, no, the one that saved me was you. You are here, Anisphia, you are here you're the one that saved me. It's a very beautiful scene, and yes, I, I think it really did well in the lead up to the kiss, and Anisphia's response to pretty much push Ophelia to confirm it, that yes, she loves her, and that she's always gonna love her, all that kind of stuff was, was super cute. I'm sure everybody out there, including myself, super excited that it's an, actually a series that's going along with it. This isn't Yuri bait. <laughs> Again, conf confirmation, this is not Yuri bait. Um, they're going, they're going full out with this, and they even have the whole scene later on with them going off to wherever they're going off to, school or whatever, or work, <laughs> having them have to give a goodbye kiss, and, yeah, unfortunately, Anisphia is still, she's still, she's still too shy, she could only do on the cheek. It's cute. It, it, it really did well in kind of showing that it's not, like, a one-sided thing. Euphelia, darn, was as they say top she was she was aggressive as heck just throws an isvia down and's like no i'm gonna keep doing this um but it, it wasn't one-sided they both felt the same way and that's that's the again in isvia i think has loved euphelia for a long time i don't think euphelia ever knew that an was there an was always watching her and thought that her magic was beautiful she fell in love with the art of euphelia so this is something that she's been having one-sided for a long time. It's just now Euphelia returning it. Euphelia was Anisphia's inspiration. Yes, it was the whole vision of the other world and flying and stuff like that. But Euphelia was her inspiration. It's always She's always been her inspiration. She was completely awestruck by the beauty of Euphelia using her magic. But I love the comment that Euphelia makes before she says she loves her. She's the greatest mage. She is the greatest magician in the entire world. Just, it hurts. But yes, that all leads to Euphelia, them confirming pretty much, Euphelia, that, that she made a contract during the fight. Um, and that Euphelia, Euphelia is part of the family. She's going to become queen. Anisphia is not going to be queen. She's going to keep working on her magicology. They're going to revolutionize the world. They want to break the, the disparity between the magic and the non-magic, the commoners and the nobles. And the way to do that, apparently, is to introduce flying into the world. <laughs> Which, yes, it, it, from a general sense, is Euphelia saying, we're going to introduce magicology. And is going to keep doing magicology. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to implement this stuff. Uh, now, granted, Gans says that it's going to be difficult. Like, these nobles aren't going to accept it. I, I think how they really did it was to kind of introduce it into society, introduce it into the commoners, and then the nobles don't have a choice. It did show a couple shots of Euphelia really pressing on, like they, they had the old man, the old bearded man, and she's like literally just pounding into his head what she wants to be done. So it kind of implies that she's doing a lot of work in the background, proving herself to be useful to them. And then at some point, here we go, we're doing this. The, the, everybody gets it. <laughs> and all the males out there, enjoy wearing your dress if you want to fly because we made these dresses that can make you fly and you're going to have to wear a dress. <laughs> and this immediately came to my mind. They're like, and we have these dresses that make you fly, everybody can fly now. And I'm like, first of all, I was thinking, how much is this gonna cost? Can the commoners even afford it? But second was, poor guys, <laughs> they're gonna have to wear this dress. They're gonna have to look like pretty, pretty, pretty little princesses. But yeah, it, it all leads to this idea that she's bringing the end of the age of magic, out with the old, in with the new, all that kind of stuff. The two of them together, the, the girl who made the pact and the girl who was the princess, the royal blood, that is at her side. So. 
again, it was a really, really nice little kind of wrap up of everything. It was really cute. And then, yes, talking about her making a sword for Nisphia that's called Sky because she's always wanted to be in the sky. And being that her weapon is rainbow, they'll always be together. Doki dokies, all that stuff. Mushy crap. It's good. It was good. I have to admit that the inspiration for the Next Generation reference was a little bit cheesy. <laughs> I mean, throughout the entire series, we kept getting that reference shot of reaching down to pick up the other. They kept using that over and over again to the point where it's just got pointless to even point out because it just does it all the time. But randomly seeing these two girls <laughs> that both have the same exact hairstyle as Anisphia and Euphelia <laughs> running around together and watching the, them flying around. I'm like, yes, I get it. That's the next generation. I get it. I get it. <laughs> to pound it in. Just so you didn't know. In case you didn't know, let's turn their heads so you can see the hairstyle is exactly the same. This is the next generation. <laughs> it was cheesy. It was a little bit cheesy. It's cute, but cheesy. In the end, I think overall, this series is... I'm probably going to put it like a 9 out of 10 for me. I, I really do think it was a 10 out of 10 until episode 11. Despite the fact that I do believe now... From a perspective of episode 12, it makes perfect sense what happens in 11. Don't get me wrong, but I still believe the conversations in 11 felt off. They were very awkward. They didn't feel natural. It was a lot of kind of back and forth. The mood kept shifting. One character would be angry. The other one would cry. Then the other one would cry. It just felt like the emotions were all over the place, and it didn't make sense how those emotions transitioned. And so I still think that there's a... A little bit of awkwardness there. I still think it's like it's like borderline 10. I don't know. I might still in the end give it 10. I think I'm going to sit on it for a while. I'm not going to do my review right off the bat. I think I'm going to sit on it for a while and really wonder if... I, and I'll definitely go rewatch episode 11. I really want to sit on this for a little bit and really kind of figure out what I feel about 11 despite 12. Because again, it, it makes sense with 12. It's explained. But does it make that very awkward conversation in 11 work right now knee jerk i don't think it does but it doesn't ruin the whole show my concern last episode was is this a wonder egg priority we're gonna get episode 11 and 12 just tanks the entire show for me it didn't 12 fixed a lot of that 12 fixed the show in the end and recoursed it back to being an animated of the year contender for sure this is an anime year contender by far but will it be a 10 out of 10 in the end? I don't think so. Because again, it's just, it's got those awkward conversations that sort of ruin a little bit. Do I want more? For sure. Uh, another season of this would be fantastic. Unfortunately, this is another one of those shows where I really love it and I just know it's not going to get a sequel. <laughs> Anything I absolutely love never gets sequels. So that's just how it is, unfortunately. I think I've seen a lot of people saying that this has adapted three volumes so far. And it's, I think it's got six volumes. So I guess it does technically have enough for another season. But I don't know. It, it all depends on how that it can pace those three more. I mean, sometimes there's so much of a chunk they end up kind of removing because it doesn't work well in an animated format. And they might have a lot of that stuff in four through six. But we'll see. Um, again, I would love another season. Love this series. Love these characters. Cannot get enough of it. And I am super sad that it's gone. Like, this show completing now, and then tomorrow we have Onimai completing. It's like my two favorite of the season. It, it breaks my heart. It's like, that's it. They're, they're gone. Hopefully next season does have some things to kind of fill in that hole in my heart. But um, I loved covering it. I definitely appreciate you guys checking out my weekly videos. Um, it was a lot of fun talking with you guys. Despite everybody review bombing and thumbs downing my last video, I forgive you. But yeah, I loved it. It was so much fun. I thank you guys for joining me for it. And yes, as usual, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you've not already. And I'll have a review coming up here soon enough after I kind of sit on this for a little bit. But <laughs> I thank you guys for dropping by. If you have not already, make sure that like button down below. Comment. Leave me a comment on based on... <laughs> you can keep yelling at me, I guess. <laughs> Additionally, if you want to support the channel more, I have a Patreon link, a tips link, and a super thanks button down below. I greatly appreciate it, but it supports the channel. And y'all take care.